How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to show you how to capture your behind the scenes for TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and to be able to fight that algorithm and post some nice content. So let's jump right into it. As we all know how social media has been growing has been more into the format of short video form content whether we like it or not i made a video about how to repurpose your social media kind of youtube long form videos into short form content to be able to document and you know post more often when it comes down to short form content for social media since that's what it looks like where the social media is headed to instagram has come out plenty of times talking about how they're pushing more of the video content in reels basically to be able to compete with TikTok and how much it succeeded on the short form content, as well as YouTube coming out with their YouTube shorts. Now, not necessarily is that in favor for us if you're a photographer, but I wanna show you a bit of my tips and tricks that I do personally to be able to capture some behind the scenes footage to be able to use for short form content. That way I'm staying as relevant as possible with the algorithm, whether I like it or not, I'm having to adjust as much as possible. Do I wish that Instagram would just let me post my photos as just content and still have the same reach as reels? For sure I would, but at the same time as a business owner, I will have to learn how to adapt and be able to you know, push my social media presence as much as possible and just use the algorithm to my favor to keep growing as much as possible. It's taken a long time to grow on Instagram, so it's kind of been a different vibe to just be able to have to do short form content that I was posting on TikTok and YouTube anyway. So hopefully this will help you out with the methods that you can create some nice behind the scenes to be able to showcase your photography still and beat that algorithm. I'm gonna personally show you the methods that I've used for myself when it comes down to documenting some behind the scenes, kind of POV style that helped me out personally to document as much as I can of my photo shoots, to be able to shoot it in a style that I can make it into short form content, to post on social media with Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. This has helped me just stay relevantly this has helped me to stay consistently as possible to post as much as I can on social media, whether it's just five second snippets, 10, 15, 30 seconds, it doesn't matter, but it's just something that I can post online so people can see my work and still use the algorithm to my advantage. Surprisingly, actually has helped me out to grow my YouTube channel as well as my TikToks and Instagram using the short form content style, just because I know that's what's being pushed. So. We're gonna go ahead and show you the two methods that I use so that one, you can definitely already use it if you kinda, you know, should own a phone. And the other method that I use with a GoPro. One of the things that you'll definitely need is this phone holder when it comes down to your phone because you already have a phone that has probably decent capabilities of shooting video. And if you don't, then I'm not really sure how to help you out on that end, but I'm sure it shoots at least 1080p. Most phones nowadays shoot 4K and most people have a decent size, you know, camera sensor phone that has good enough quality to be able to document some behind the scenes to just post on social media. So you can get these kind of style of, you know, phone kind of adapters that you can mount on your camera so that you can put it on the cold shoe mount kind of style so that way you can put it on top and put your phone on there so i'm going to show you how i would do and go about and take some photos and just do some portraits here in the back um, of my house with my wife i'm going to use her as a model take some random photos and show you how i would repurpose this for short form content using my phone and then I'll show you how I would use it with the GoPro setups that I also have been using more now since I don't want to always use my phone, but I did use my phone a lot for POV content and behind the scenes that, you know, I'll, I'll kind of sprinkle about here in this video so you can see some of the stuff that I've created with just my phone and the GoPro as well. So I'm going to show you how I personally put my phone onto my camera to do some behind the scenes as well. So if i'm using this little one right here which was like i don't remember a thing like maybe like five seven bucks or whatever this is one that was pretty decent that you can just have a little cold shoe mount that you just prop up on your camera and then you can put your phone i mean i have a battery case i'll just take it off of this to make life easier but i usually just use either the camera app to be able to do the video or if I really want to kind of color grade it a little bit more, there are some apps like the Filmic Pro app or the Moment app where you can just kind of set it up if you want to have a little bit more stabilization and do the ultra wide lens. Make sure that I post it like this because if I want to use it for the content of, for behind the scenes while I'm shooting as well, but also have it to be able to crop in where I don't lose that much quality, it's fine. 
but that's how it looks like and that's just how I do it. You can shoot vertical if you want to. If you only if you know you're only going to be using it for, you know, short form content like Reels, TikTok and YouTube short, you can use it in the vertical mode. But I personally just keep it this way because if I want to use it for YouTube, I am able to shoot this way, showcase the behind the scenes and also just crop it in into the 16 by nine style so that I can have it in vertical mode to be able to, you know, repurpose it for short form content. So I'm gonna do a little bit of portraits to show you how it looks, that way it looks like the POV style and how it repurpose it into the TikTok kind of, I guess, crop mode style as well. So you can see both. We'll have you go over here, right about her, right there, should be good. So I'm gonna do like a little portrait style. So if I wanted to just do a, um, you know, photo this way where I can kind of showcase a little bit. Stand like close, like almost like your head like this. So I want to have you like that. And then you're going to look at me. There you go. So that way I can kind of repurpose it this way if I want to for a little social media style or if I wanted to have it more in the horizontal mode to make sure that I, you know, get the nice shots this way. I can have it the same way style like that and it works out. So I'm showcasing the behind the scenes that way. And then I can just have a little bit of the photos that I can use both ways to make sure that I have the best outcome. But that's how I repurpose, you know, my videos like that I did in a previous video of mine for short form content. One of the cool thing is, cause I can take out the sound if I really want to add a little voiceover if the sound isn't something that I want to maybe do for short form content and make sure that I have the best style of, you know, for the purpose that I want to do for my short form content that way. That way I can also make sure that I have multiple purposes for this footage in case I want to do a just short form kind of video style of, hey, this is what I'm using it for. It's maybe about the gear or maybe I want to do like a portraits at home style and I can just do a voiceover to make it use for what I needed best. Now the next method that I have is using a GoPro. I recently upgraded to a GoPro instead of using my phone, especially because when I was traveling, having to have my phone fill up with all that memory or if I needed to use my phone for a GPS when I was at a new location, didn't want to go with the hassle of having to take it off my chest mount or my phone mount so I didn't have to deal with that situation. Kind of was annoying so I decided to get a GoPro and you can get these on sale pretty often so it's something that I think it's a good investment if you want to use a relatively cheaper way to do a BTS camera rather than just using your phone if you want to have your phone for other situations that you have to use for maybe the photo shoot that you have your ideas there you don't have to go too much back and forth so I'm going to show you the way that I use it personally and then other ways that you can use it as well because sometimes I use a little bit of a rig chest mount but also I have this thing where it just clips onto my backpack so I'm going to show you how that looks and do a little bit behind the scenes of that that way and see how you know it looks for you and this is how i set up my gopro just whenever i just want to clip it on if i don't want to use this little chest mount this chest mount is pretty good if i want to have more of a centered kind of style for pov style when i go out and shoot photos pov street photography for anything behind the scenes that i really need to but if i want to just be out and about and just put something on to kind of take some behind the scenes i usually use this clip i didn't think i was going to use it as much as i thought it was you know for the purpose of it but i've been using it more than my chest mount because it's just faster up and go kind of style and since i have a backpack most of the time when i'm shooting these videos it makes sense if i need to travel a little bit lighter and i just don't want to have a backpack with me to clip on it i do tend to use this you know chest mount kind of style and then just leave it on the whole time and go with that but for the sake of time i'm just going to show you how it looks with this um, this is the most common one that most people tend to use which you can use as well for your phone but Let's get some portraits showing you how this works and the, that way to see which one you likes best for you. But either of these methods, I think are, it's gonna be a good win-win. So I'm just gonna do it the same style that I was doing it with the phone. That way you can kind of see what they would look like. I would just pretend like I'm taking these photos, you know, nice and simple, getting that kind of portrait style look, showcasing what I'm doing. With this one, I can have it where it keeps itself horizontal rather than going vertical, which is kind of nice as well. But if I want to take different types of photos, my footage itself won't, you know, be affected by that when the behind the scenes style. You can't put this GoPro on top if you get the mount for it. But for me, I just noticed that it's nicer to showcase a little bit more the, the hands in front, how they're working and what kind of type of photos I'm taking so that it showcases to the audience a little bit more. But that's basically how it looks and how it works when it comes down to some behind the scenes with the GoPro. 
there you go these are the two methods that i use personally when it comes down to shooting behind the scenes footage for my short form content that way if you're just a photographer and not really wanting to divvy up a lot with long form content on youtube and you want to stay a little bit more present into the new algorithm kind of style with the reels being pushed more for video this will help you out to showcase your photos and also your videos of behind the scenes kind of style so that your audience can see how you create which i also think is a really cool thing in my honest opinion a lot of people give it hate when it comes down to these short form contents and saying that they're not videographers or they're not this and that and just to me sometimes it's a little bit of an excuse to not just adjust to what's happening i know most of us make fun of older people saying like oh uh you know like it's a grumpy old man kind of style but at the end of the day i think personally it's good to be able to adjust when it comes down to the new setup the new algorithms if it changes back to photography, then you're set, but if not, you've learned a new skill. And that's just how I personally like to view things a little bit more when it comes down to a little bit of the changes. It's something that probably is relevant for me to be able to create and just better my skills so I can bring a new asset into basically my arsenal when it comes down to my content creation needs. But ultimately, which one will you use more? Would it be the GoPro? Would you be your phone? It all depends on what you're trying to create and how are you trying to use it because you're also welcome to just set up your phone behind you, showcasing you taking photos. The same thing with the GoPro. Cool thing about this is uh, with this has a magnet so you can kind of put it on metal if that were the situation to arise that there is something metallic around you to put. So it's able to kind of create a little bit more than just some behind the scenes and posting it online. The cool thing about Reels as well right now is that you can post the Reel itself and then import a, I guess, thumbnail kind of style photo that allows you to showcase your photo still when people check out your profile. So if you're so much about the aesthetic of your timeline and your profile, that should help you out a little bit more to have some ease of mind and still adjust to having a little bit of video content form style, which you can create with these for behind the scenes to stay relevant with the algorithm. Hopefully either of these will help you out to be able to stay, you know, with the ever changing times of the algorithm and social media. As much as we might hate it, sometimes it's just good to just, you know, get up and go and do it and be fine with it and just evolve with it to be able to, to milk it as much as possible to keep growing. Social media is not the most important thing, but it is can be a good asset for you to be able to create more, you know, clients and work and everything like that. So might as well just get used to it and use it to your advantage. And hopefully these two alternatives will help you out to create some behind the scenes to use for your social media, whether it's on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube short form. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.